am excited about this one. In fact, I've not been in this excited about a camera for a long, long time. Welcome to the video, guys. I hope you're all doing well. This is the first video in a, I guess, a bit of a series of videos that I'll be doing over the next few weeks all about my brand new camera. Some of you guys who follow me along in previous videos and social media and stuff like that, this won't be a surprise for you at all, but I have got hold of the Canon R6. I am seriously excited about this. It took me a long time to kind of land on where my decision was going to be and what I wanted to do camera wise. Made a video all about that. Go and check, I think not the video before. In fact, you know what, I'll put a link right here so you can go check out that video if you are interested in it. But I did it, I landed on the Canon R6. And today's video is gonna be a bit of an initial kind of overview and also my thoughts on how I'm gonna set this camera up to shoot some sports. I've got a sports event coming up actually t tomorrow morning where I'm gonna go and be using this for the first time and I am gonna set up the camera ready for that. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do with the menu and a few of the buttons and stuff like that to get it ready, in my mind anyway, to shoot some sports. Now don't get me wrong, this camera is pretty much good to go straight out the box. You could take it out the box, do it on the auto settings and you would be fine. But of course I want to set it up right for me. Now I should also say this isn't any kind of like a scientific review. This is literally me setting it up as per my personal preferences. Some things you might think are a little bit odd but that's because I've got some future videos coming. So for example, in this setup right now I won't be setting it up to use the electronic shutter. That's because I've got a whole separate video coming where we're going to test the electronic shutter everything like that because I think it'll be quite interesting for you guys for this I'm kind of setting it up as per I would for pretty much any camera really so initially and for the first bit of the event tomorrow I will use the manual shutter not because I think it's better or you shouldn't use the electronic shutter or anything like that it's purely because we're going to do a whole separate video testing it out and I kind of don't want to muddle that video with this video hopefully that makes sense to you guys right Anyway, first of all, let's have a quick look at the actual camera. So a lot of you guys will know I've been using the Canon EOS R, so I'm fairly familiar now with the kind of R system and the R setup and the uh, the camera body from the EOS R. So I think so some similarities, right? In terms of the size of it, it's roughly the same, although the R6 is a little bit bigger, but it's roughly the same. You can see uh, with the comparisons on the profile and from the top, a little bit of size difference, but not really very much at all. The biggest comparisons really or at least the biggest differences I should say are when you look at the back of this camera and when you look at the top of the camera so quickly let's just start off with the top largely the same but the difference really is that you have got this twisty dial at the top of the R6 of course that changes from having the screen at the top of the EOS R for me actually I prefer this this is something I'm really excited about with all of my cameras I'm used to having this kind of setup and I really actually enjoy the dial I quite like the I guess almost like the tactileness of being able to turn that dial I quite enjoy that so I've got to say I'm quite pleased about that change not really too much else going on on the top really we've got the two twisty dials which are do like two twisty dials combined with the dial on the back for me that makes me a lot quicker when I'm changing um, the three main variables the shutter speed the aperture and the ISO level it means I can do those all real quick nice and easy and that brings us on to looking at the back of the camera so the first thing to say and again I talked about this in my previous video really really excited that this still has the flip screen makes it perfect for my videos perfect for my vlogs I'm going to be used that all the time so really really pleased that it's got the flip screen screen. So when we look at the back, probably the biggest um, change with the back of this camera versus the EOS R is that we have lost the kind of touch screen dial that was there, the, the touch bar. And instead, we are back to the good old joystick. Now, people have different views on this. Some people like the touch bar. There wasn't really anything wrong with it, but I've got to confess, I do love the joystick. I'm really, really pleased to have my little thumb joystick back. I needed it it's back in my life. Really, really pleased about that. Another key change with this one, if we're looking at the sides of the camera, is the fact that the R6 has the two card slots. I can fit two SD cards in there. Really pleased about that. It helps me with my backup process. The fact I've got two copies of all the images, because when I shoot sports, I copy uh, both the same images to both cards. So I've got two sets straight off the bat. Really pleased with that. We look at the other side of the camera. Again, not much change, because this is just where the different plugins are. A tiny, tiny thing. People might think I'm stupid, but something I really like is they have moved the microphone port it is slightly higher so now 
when you're moving your touch screen and you turn that touch screen, it's not going to hit the microphone port anymore. You guys who use the EOS Alpha video, you know what I'm talking about. Such a little tiny simple change, but something that will make a big difference, 100%. Otherwise, I guess it looks very much kind of as expected, very similar kind of look and feel to the EOS R, which is exactly what I thought it would be. So let's move into some of the setup. What am I gonna do uh, to change this to make it set up for me to shoot sports? For this, I, I literally am gonna go through the menu and pick out some of the highlights. I'm not gonna touch on every single menu option because I would be sat here for two hours. You guys don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna go through and pick out, I guess, some of the bits that I think are um, highlights or important bits that I wanna tell you about. So let's do it. Let's get stuck into this menu. Okay, so starting over on the left hand side of the menu, first thing here, image quality. For me, for shooting my images, I'm going to be shooting in JPEG for sports. I've done a lot of videos and talk about this. Why do I shoot JPEG for sports? Mostly because of the speed of the workflow. But in summary, I'm going to be setting that to JPEG. Of course, the large JPEG files I want the best quality JPEG I can get for shooting my sports. The cropping and aspect ratio, not going to touch that. Leave that on full. Right, let's move over. The next section of the menu, in fact, the next really the next couple of sections of the menu I'm not really going to be changing anything outside of the default settings that you get with the camera so don't worry too much about that white balance will be set to auto white balance I'm going to leave that in auto as I do with 90% of my sports work so instead we're going to jump all the way over to page number six within this first section of the menu and just looking at the shutter mode i will be setting this to mechanical shutter as i said before not saying that that's what you've got to do to shoot sports that's what i'm doing to set this up for tomorrow when we do the other video to test that electronic shutter that will then in itself determine how we set this up in the future but for right now we're just setting it to mechanical shutter the other thing which i'm going to do i've talked about this before as well the release shutter without card. I'm going to be turning that off. I don't ever want my camera taking a photo without a memory card in there. To me, that seems like a simple option to turn off. Why would you want it to take a photo without a memory card? To me, that just gives me an opportunity to make a mistake and not have a memory card in there. So I would turn that off. It will not take a photo without the memory card in the slot. Gonna jump over to the next section of the menu, um, the image review. So now in the EOS R, I talked about turning this off so that it didn't appear in the viewfinder and didn't affect my taking images. Now, um, I'm gonna leave that on for now. I'm gonna have it at the two second duration. I don't believe that's gonna be an issue with the R6. So I'm just gonna leave that on and we'll see how we get on with it tomorrow. Okay, so from there, we're gonna jump over into the autofocus sections of the menu. So some quite key key stuff of course going on in here. Okay so first off at the top AF operation autofocus operation I'm going to be setting this to servo mode. I wanted to have the servo mode for the tracking for the autofocus really really important for sports and anything moving fast so I will have it set up to servo mode. Next down into the autofocus method now this is going to be quite an interesting one I am going to do some videos about this there will be a whole video where we are going to test out the face detection tracking autofocus but that's not going to be first thing tomorrow to start with we are going to use the one point autofocus the single point and I'm going to have that set to the center point okay so that's going to be how we're starting off tomorrow for sports great place to start off doing that if you want to you could do the one that's the expanded one with a little cross in the middle but that's going to be me tomorrow going to test out the face tracking in a separate video right now that's going to be the way for me to go there's a new section in this autofocus menu called subject to detect and you can change that from people uh, to animals um, and to no priority so I've not played with this section of the menu before not tried this out so to start off with I'm going to set that to people mostly because I'm going to be photographing people so makes sense now a bit of a change to what I talked about in the EOS R video further down in this menu we have got the continuous autofocus now I'm actually going to disable that actually largely off the advice of one of you guys who commented on that video and you said that you found that it contradicts um, the servo focus by constantly trying to refocus uh, and almost fighting against you so actually I've taken that on board done a bit of experimentation myself and now I am going to turn that off. I will be focusing myself. I'm going to use back button focus. I'll get onto that in a second uh, in servo mode so I'm turning the continuous autofocus off. 
Okay, from there, we're gonna jump over slightly more. Gonna stop in section three of the autofocus menu real briefly, just to touch on the cases. I did a whole video about this with the autofocus cases in the 1DX and actually linking the same as I found in that video. For this, I'm gonna be using case one. That is the versatile multi-purpose setting. That's the one that we're gonna be using. Okay, we're gonna jump over quite a few sections now. Not to say the sections we're jumping over aren't important, I just don't think they're key to talk about in this video right now. Jumping over to section four of the kind of um, like image review section of the menus. And this is all to do with the rate button. Now, much like uh, my 7D Mark II, this camera has a rate button on the back and you can change the function of that rate button. Now, I am changing it so that that becomes the lock button. So when I press that rate button, it locks the image that I'm reviewing at the time. I'm doing that as part of my workflow for sports, so I can look through the images on the back of the camera, lock the ones that I want, and then I can set it up so my laptop and my photo mechanic will only ingest those locked images. So I'm setting it up like that because it helps with my workflow. Okay, from there we're jumping over a few more sections as well. Uh, I don't know what you call this section of the menu, but it's the one with like the spanner icon. And we're in the first part of that. And the first thing is the record function um, and card folder select. So in this section of the menu, I'm just gonna be setting it up so it records the images to multiple cards. So I want it to record to multiple. You can set it so it records different things to different cards and stuff like that. I don't want that, I just want it to record all my images to multiple cards so everything I take a photo of getting recorded to both cards so I've got two sets of everything that I take. Further down here we've got the format the card of course I'm going to make sure I format both the memory cards in the camera before I go out tomorrow morning I do that before every single shoot really really important of course make sure you're not formatting a card that you've got images on that you need but before I go to every new shoot I will always format the memory cards before I go. Okay, so from there, we are jumping further over in the menu to the section where you can customize the buttons and the dials. Really, really important section for me. I'm just gonna show you how I set it up, right? Different people will have this set up in different ways. I'm showing you how I set it up. So first of all, we're gonna go into the customize the button section. Now inside customizing the buttons, you guys who watch my videos, you know that I prefer back button focus. So for me, first thing I'm gonna do is set this shutter button up so that it does not link to autofocus anymore. When you go into it, there's three different things you can do with this one. You can set it up so it does metering and autofocus start. You can set it up so it starts the metering and you can set it to the um, the AE lock button. But, but but basically I'm setting up so it just starts the metering, no autofocus at all attached to that button anymore because I will be linking the autofocus to the button on the back. With that in mind, when we jump down a couple, not gonna be messing with that movie shooting button. The next one down is the AF on button and that is the one on the back of the camera. That's the one that I will be linking to the autofocus. Okay, I'm gonna link that to the autofocus because that's where I want to autofocus with my thumb. If you don't know about back button focus or, or you don't understand why I choose to do that, I've made videos on that. Go check those out. You can learn all about it there. There's loads of other buttons that you can customize in this section of the menu. Right now, I haven't changed anything else. Those are the only key ones to start me off. Let's have a look at the dials. So customizing the dials. Now, not really changing much here, but just to show you how I've got them set up, the dial on the top of the camera, um, which is the one right by the shutter button, I've got that so it's linked to my shutter speed. I will change that for shutter speed. The one um, on the, the top of the camera, kind of the top back, because you use it with your thumb on the back here, that one I've got linked to ISO, so I will use that to change my ISO. And lastly, the dial on the bottom on the back will be linked to my aperture, so that's the one that I will use to change the aperture picture makes it really handy means that really simply with my hand I can get to all three settings really quick really easily and I won't even have to look at what I'm doing and that's about it guys that is the setup I'm um, at least stage one of the setup for the Canon EOS R ready to go for sports now I should quickly say I'm going to be using my EF lenses on this camera so I will be using the adapter tomorrow I will primarily be using it on my 300 mil um, and on my 70 to 200 so that's going to be the first I'm um, kind of test to share with you the plan for the next few videos. I'm gonna be having a video um, where I just kind of generally test it for sports and we see how it gets on. Gonna be testing all 
all the things that we found problems with with the EOS R. Is it fast enough? Is the frame rate quick enough? Which I think, yes, it's definitely going to be. Does it autofocus quick and well? Does it work well for sports? Going to do all the usual kind of tests. I'm already fairly confident that it is going to do well, but we'll do that just as a general video. And of course, I will share with you a load of the images that we took. I'm then going to do a specific video where we try the electronic shutter and we just try that electronic shutter, no manual shutter whatsoever, and we see how we get on, see how it links, do we have any rolling shutter issues, is it a usable electronic shutter for sports. And then I also want to do a bit of a video where we test out the face detection. Does the face detection work? Can you use it for sports? Does it work well? I think that would be quite interesting for us. That's about it for this video, guys. But if you're excited to see more about this camera, hit that like button for me. It helps me out loads of my video and I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Stick around for the next few Canon R6 videos. And most importantly, if there is anything that you guys would like to know about this camera, anything you'd like to see, anything you'd like to learn, make sure you whack it in the comments let me know and i can include that into my tests over the course of these next few days in the meantime guys thank you very much for watching i'm going to see you i will see you on the next video